What up, everybody? Welcome to the Camel Cast. I'm, like a, little, I'm a little <laughs> way too excited for my old age in this time of night. No way. Totally warranted. <laughs> uh, welcome to, to, to the episode tonight, everybody. I am your host, AJ, and with me, uh, this is the usual, usual cast of, uh, of uh, dorks uh, we have here is uh, Tulsa Doom himself, Mr. Justin White. Hello, sir. Greetings. Uh, uh, Joey, Joey uh, Labartnik down there. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I stay down there because on my screen, you're down at the bottom. I don't know what it's like for everybody else's screen. I'm on the bottom here, too. Yeah, I'm same good. for me. I'm awesome. The He's always been a bottom so he's at the bottom. It's true. So yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, on this episode, we're gonna do uh, uh, some new stuff. We're gonna uh, skim the web and catch up on some news bits that have been floating around. Then uh, we're gonna be discussing Alien Romulus toward the end of the show, uh, Batman Cape Crusader toward the beginning, and then have a little. Uh, I have a little discussion about some bad news we heard this week. Um, but let's start off with some of the news bits. Uh, you guys bring any news with you this week? Um, the only news I've been following uh, kind of steady is uh, the new uh, the 2024 D&D rules update. I've been watching a bunch of videos about that. And uh, it, the book's due out in September, but they gave a bunch of um, YouTube personalities uh advanced copies so i've been watching videos on the the different update stuff so kind of excited about that and keeping my eye on that that's yeah. cool yeah that uh that could be something oh, i wanted to announce everybody we have uh rick Terry coming on to the, the show this weekend uh, so that should be fun but you can discuss some of that stuff with him as he's a big D D gamer yeah I'm not allowed to be because my my dungeon master is there, and won't come game with me. So, well, we can. We just gotta set it up. Where are you pointing? I'm, <laughs> I'm not pointing below me, Joe. So you don't have to worry. You should have. You should have been like. I'm oh. pointing next to me. There just you go. To, just to be clear, he's pointing at me. So yeah. right. right. I was gonna say I haven't I haven't I haven't agreed to run a campaign and since I was in my teens. So no, if we can set it up, we could get together and do a one shot sometime or something. That'd be great. I love one shots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd be down for another twelve hour day. You know, or something. Yeah. I have a campaign I'm in now. A monster. It's called Monster of the Week, and it's yeah. for like small, you know, small one or two session games, and it's great. Yeah, it works. It works great. Awesome. Yeah, I played that a couple times with Jason. It was a really cool game. Yeah, it's fun. I've heard of it. It sounds cool. You role play a lot. A lot more than yeah. you would with D&D. It's not as combat oriented, which is, you know, I love D&D for that. But it is different. It's, it's fun to have something different. Sometimes you just want a little bit of everything. You want to, you want the experience. You want the, you want the, the, the characters to act out and be in character. But you also want to fight, you know? Well, yeah, exactly. You know, you want the flavor. But sometimes it's fun to just roll dice and beat, beat, beat right. stuff. Right. Until you, you know, randomly have to make love to your DM for some reason, and then it gets awkward. Man, what campaigns have you you've been in? in? You've been in some fucked up campaigns, man. Well, you know, Jason was always my DM, so like I just oh, didn't wow. know what to do. So, you know. All right. Well, back on the news front, I, I thought this would be something funny to discuss with you guys, because I'm sure you guys would appreciate it. We all saw Anaconda, right? Remember the original? Yeah. Anaconda. Yeah. With the with J Lo and and J Lo and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the and the, uh, well, they're making a sequel. Hmm. Is it a and, sequel or a remake? Because I I saw this news too. Is it a sequel or a remake? It's a it's a reimagining. Sorry, my bad. It's a reimagining, uh, and it's from the guy that that directed the unbearable weight of massive talent, which was huh. the uh, Nick Cage uh, movie. Cage movie, yeah. Yeah. Um, and in this film, uh, a group of friends face a midlife crisis and decide to remake their favorite film from their youth. So they head to the rainforest and only to find themselves in their fight for their lives against natural disasters, giant snakes, and violent criminals. Uh, 
in the film, you'll be seeing Jack Black and Paul Rudd as they team up in this film. Um, so they're going to make a remake of Anaconda and end up in the movie of remake Anaconda. of Anaconda. <laughs> yeah. I'll buy it. I'd buy yeah. it. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anything, it'll be it, fun. It's definitely it definitely sounds up that director's alley. It's all very right. meta. It's very it, meta. It, it, <laughs> Yeah, it, it sounds it sounds a little. Uh, um, um, it's a meta take. Huh? It's a meta take, but yeah. It, well, I'm saying it. It sounds like what's that movie with The Rock and Jack Black and or Jumanji? Jumanji. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I can, can imagine them all in the jungle, like messing around and talking like that and stuff. Uh, so I'm kind of interested in that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Now I, I'm curious. I'll withhold judgment for now. Moving on. Call me um, Anaconda Curious. <laughs> yeah. You know, the first one's great. The, both, actually, both of them are, in their own way, is great. Uh, so, that, you know, but they don't take them so seriously. So I could see, you know, I could see a take where it's a little meta and crazy. It's fun. But I'm going to withhold judgment on that. <laughs> we'll wait till you uh, you start doing your thing on it. <laughs> uh, to to hold judgment, <laughs> yeah. Um, but on the on a sad note, and I don't know if this is going to uh, bother anybody in the way that I think it will, but for me, it bothers me that the sequel to Happy Gilmore is getting underway in a couple of weeks in New Jersey. Yeah, um, that's uh, uncalled for, but you know, yeah. The co-director, not, not surprising of, at all. The yeah. co-director of Uncut Gems, Benny Safty is going to be starring in the film along with Adam Sandler and Travis Kelsey, the footballer that is dating Taylor Swift. Yeah, I've seen him in something else recently too. Is is Safty directing it? Um, I don't know. There's no mention of it yet. Hmm. But Just being in it's not enough. Although he was in that uh the curse and, and that was cool, you know. Yeah. So so yeah, there's the, only, that. the only thing surprising about that is it took this long. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. I don't know, like, if they're gonna get because uh, you know now that uh, um, what's his name passed away. Yeah, they're not gonna get Carl Weathers, right? Right. Bob Barker passed away. Carl Weathers passed away. My god uncle Richard Keel passed away. So uh, I mean, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna get Drew Carey to be in there now that he's the new Price Is Right host? You know, is Wayne Brady bitch going to show up? You know, is Wayne Brady going to slap a bitch? That's yeah. what I'm going to be waiting for. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that either. Uh, so, you know, that's that's kind of pretty much all I have as far as the news goes. Uh, there's one other bit of news that, that we wanted I want to discuss, but we'll talk about that after we take our, our – after we do this first story, this first review. Did you see – I'm going to interrupt here before we jump on. Did you see that Civ- Seven, Civilization Seven was announced? That's big news. That trailer was awesome. I did not see that. The Sid Meier game? Uh, yeah, I'm now preparing to lose another 1,000 hours of my life. I see it coming <laughs> like a train. It's big news. I you haven't played that in forever. you got to prepare for these kind of things. Huh? you got to prepare for these kind of things. Right. I, I understand. And I'll make sure not to ask for any, you know, comic book work or anything to be done. <laughs> One, more time. One more turn. One more turn. <laughs> right. It will not be available. In the meantime, I'm like, but we have a convention. One more turn. <laughs> uh, well, you know, for the next segment, I'm going to throw it over to Justin because he just did a great article on it on the Shots for the Studio. Um, so Justin, why don't you tell us a little bit about Batman Cape Crusader? Um, okay. Um, well, it was 10 episodes. Um, it's executive produced by Bruce Tim, who you, everyone probably knows did the original Batman, the animated series. Um, it's also co-produced by, uh, Matt Reeves who directed, uh, the latest, uh, Batman movie, the Batman. And it's also co-produced by JJ Abrams. And, and what's and, that? Oh, yeah. And uh, the another producer who is also the head writer is Ed Brubaker, 
of uh, comic book fame. And um, if you're familiar with Ed Brubaker, the the um, the choice, the story choices in Batman won't surprise you. Ah, there you go. Um, yeah. So uh, it was ten episodes. Um, I liked it a lot. I liked. I thought every episode was good. I thought it just got better as it went. Um, it was a had a a few different takes on some of the characters, but I think it was stayed true enough to them to where it didn't change the core concept of the character. Um, whereas the original animated series was kind of time amorphous to where it kind of looked like it was in the forties, but then they still had computers and like cell phones and stuff. This one is strictly like forties. There's no computers. There's no technology. Uh, the most advanced tech that I saw that I remember is like the, his grappling gun. He has that, but other than that, there was like no computers. All the phones were like landlines. Um, the Batmobile. Well, yeah, but it was still just a, a car. It didn't do anything crazy. He, had, he could call Alfred. Yeah, I guess he did, huh? He did have like he did have like a radio. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I don't remember if he like if there was a visual of him. I don't think so. I think it was just like a, a radio like that, thing. Because even. Sure. Because even at one point he was like he was like listening to like a police scanner too. It wasn't yeah, even like anything that might have been a point. But, um, but uh, and it the the it was, it was definitely the, low tech. Yeah, it's definitely low tech. Um, the uh, the art style was kind of reminiscent of Batman the anime series, but it was largely like especially Batman himself was largely based on the original like Bill Finger Bob Kane designs. He had like the rounded, you know, horns on his cowl. He had the short gloves instead of the, the long spiky ones. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, there was a, a slight overarching story that ran through the whole thing, but that really culminated in the last two episodes. Other than that, each episode was like a standalone thing. V very much more um, uh, like crime and corruption driven. It wasn't so much with like over the top super villains. I mean, there were villains, but it was more like uh, street level crime type stuff. And that's, uh, that's all Brubaker, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was saying about in the beginning. Ed Brubaker is very much yeah. all of his noir crime type his stuff. Yeah. And such. Yeah, yeah, all that yeah. Kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, I too, I thought that in the art style a little bit too. Yeah, it was you know. Yo, know, it was way more like it was. They full on concentrated on like the film noir stuff. There was a whole lot of whole lot of like you know uh, silhouettes from the blinds casting down on people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was great. I mean, it, yeah, it looked great. The art um, direction was amazing. Yeah. What's that? The art direction was amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The the design of everything looked cool. I liked I liked the you know the the way they updated the characters and uh, yeah, I I. I, I liked it. it. It was kind of like, um, since it was only 10 episodes, it kind of felt like it was like everything you liked about the animated series, like boiled down to a concentrate with all like the fat and like extra stuff scraped off. And you just got like, because, you know, anime series is like one of my favorite things of all time, but because there was, you know, 20 episodes a season and, you know, several seasons, there were a lot of filler episodes and, and um but yeah. this was just like a concentrate everything was just like bam 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 and everything yeah. like they had a couple I, don't, of I don't disagree with you on that one i don't feel like there were filler episodes i just felt like there was uh more character building episodes Nah, well there's like, like, i don't there's, watch it recently and there's a few episodes i was like yeah and i was like that didn't really need to be there but anyway yeah, I I, I liked it. I loved every episode. I thought every episode was important to the to the overall storyline and feel of, of the story of the of the season. I thought there were a couple in the middle that were a little throwaway. I mean, and I can't offhand remember now which ones I. Yeah, it's not before. many. I'm not, you know, right. That, you no, know, no, right. I, I understand. Like maybe like four or five. This was pretty three. concise, you know. Yeah. One thing I would say is that I've seen this story before, and I like this take on it. But this is like the third or fourth time we've seen like this sequence, the the Harvey Dent, the, right. you know, and one woman and the, you know, like it's like the, all the year one stuff, basically. Yeah. 
this was a great great retelling of it don't get me wrong and i appreciated it that it was an adult animated thing like they i mean as much as they needed to be no it harvey some, yeah, yeah it did have some little brought a tear to my eye that I think uh, that episode in itself that was a great episode. Yeah, had that yeah. mask of the phantasm doom feeling all over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there oh, were several was... really good episodes. Yeah, um, and the, again, the art was just so good, uh, man. Yeah, I really um, liked the the Clayface episode. I thought that was cool. Yeah, the Clayface. The One each episode in itself was uh, a great, almost self-contained story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where like it could have just gone right. um, and, and been almost like a TV movie, like a 60 minute TV right. movie or something right. like that, you know. And the the all of this stuff, I don't know. The 10 episodes season to me was great, mm -hmm. but I want more now. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> you know, like like I'm so desperate for more now, like I yeah. can't wait, but um, that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy every single second of it. Yeah. Um, I love the new origins that they pulled from everybody. Mm -hmm. It may not be like brand new origins. It may be a twist or something like that on the origins we already know. But it was uh, a new take on it, a new version of it, you know, like to where um, you just saw it from a different point of view. Yeah. You know, a different look at it, how it happened, especially with Clayface and mm -hmm. with um, um, with Two Face and all this stuff. Yeah, Joe, you're right. We've seen Two Face's origin in so many movies and so many shows that it's almost repetitive. But in this case, you felt bad for Two Face, like you were pulling yeah. for him in some ways. For Harvey Dent, like you believed in that man, sure. and the belief that Bruce Wayne felt in Harvey Dent, like. You know, you stood behind him, and when Bruce Wayne took that hit and found out that he was the villain now, and all this was like his almost his fault. Like you're like, oh shit, Bruce, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like the way they made they made Harvey kind of an asshole too. Yeah, like like it took he, it from cocky to like yeah. to like he was just kind of a jerk for you know a few episodes, but then. It wasn't so much that you like hated the character, you know, because he had like some redeeming qualities. So right. I thought it was a really cool take on him. I also really liked the what they did with Harley. I thought that was cool to to like give her an origin separate from the Joker, you know, make her uh -huh. her own character yeah. and let her do be her own thing. So she wasn't with her like, own oh, aspirations and her own dream. Her yeah. own, and and what they did with her, where she wasn't. She wasn't a villain so much as kind of a vigilante anti-hero, but like right. super nuts, you know, because all those people she was, you know, imprisoning weren't good people, you know. So I thought that was a cool take on it and let her have her own thing without being tied into the Joker necessarily. No, and I appreciate them waiting till the end. Sorry, spoiler alert, until the end to reveal the Joker because yeah. You know, yeah, they went this whole season without a hint yeah. of Joker. That was pretty cool. On him, you know, Gotham did it right. Same as this. Like, wait a long, you know, give it a while. You got other. Yeah. You can do like the long Halloween next. I would appreciate the shit out of a long Halloween season in this style. Yeah. Right. Uh, or you know the Calendar Man thing that no not Calendar. No, that, what's the, what was the second one that came out? Dark Victory. Yeah. Doing yeah. the Dark Victory storyline would be awesome too. Which seems like that's what they're leaning to with with the the Batman series, um, with mm -hmm. the the Penguin series coming out, and what that storyline deals with the Falcons, yeah, and yeah. getting yeah. more in depth with that stuff. I think we're going to see more uh, Huntress and 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 dark storylines and anything. Yeah, but you need the long Halloween to set all that up, right? And and man, that would be awesome to see. They. They show they have the long Halloween already on DC animated, but to see a live action version of it, or if they did like a dark version of it, that'd be great. You know, okay. that's I would too. Something like the new Hell Hellboy movie, but just not with that actor, it would be great. What the new Hellboy? Yeah. Has it come out yet? Has it come out yet? No. No, but they released a new trailer, and the trailer itself looks great. Looks and great. he looks cool, except his face just has that stupid. He looks like. Uh, I disagree, but whatever. Okay, I'm, I'm here. Let's go. This is a debate right. show. 
Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm excited for that trailer. I thought that trailer was great. I don't know. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. I want more Hellboy. I thought he looked fine. I just don't like his face. Everything else looked great. I don't like his face, man. I don't like his face. Well, sometimes that's that's just how it is sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, Cape Crusader, overall, we're all happy with it. We all loved it. It was great. Yeah, yeah overall, I thought it was great. Who yeah. was your favorite villain? What was your favorite villain story? Well, I mean, Harvey's was the best. Because that, that took the big one, you know. Yeah. Um. As far as like single villain, I think I like the Clayface one the best. Yeah, yeah. I, did too. I like Alfred. Yeah, it was good, and 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 the evolution of their relationship was fun to watch. Right. And, yeah, that was cool. And they were I like at- how I like how you got spots of Batman's origin story throughout the season. Right. Instead of like just one big origin heavy, you know, first season. Right. No, you they get have- it in flashbacks, like it's because it's Bruce's PTSD or something. Right. Yeah. And that's what I liked. It was almost like, you know, the, the one with Val Kilmer, or yeah. like he, he's getting that kind of like flashback shitty crap without Damn. all the bad visuals. Damn pearls just keep hitting the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no like- pearl necklace references, please. <laughs> I know, but it is. It's, it's oh, they had it though in this one. But he, remember, it was in the museum, and and Catwoman yeah. stole him. Yeah, that was pretty cool. You know, and generally in every movie, every in, incarnation, they use that as sort of like the visual metaphor for the murderer itself. Yeah. Right. You know, they're always like being taken and ripped off, or they're hitting the ground, or something like that. You know. Uh yep. Yeah. So um. Well, let's uh, what's the the next topic we wanted to talk about? I wanted to talk about was a little flashback into the news again, and that's uh, what are your thoughts about the acolyte getting canceled? It's a bummer. I mean, I thought it had potential, but I mean, I'm not like heartbroken. I say live by the meh, die by the meh. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not. I'm not at all surprised. I mean, um. Because I, mean, I, I found out, like, I mean, just recently, you know, after when I was reading about it being canceled, that it was like the most expensive Star Wars show that they've made. How? Right. Just all the production design and because that was like the best thing about it. It had a, it was phenomenal, like production design. But I guess, yeah, I mean, because and maybe Carrie Ann Moss. I don't know, because other than that, there was like nobody of note in it. You know what I mean? Right. Half the people in the show wear the same damn robes. You know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Everybody had the same flashlights. I mean, lightsabers. They just yeah, had different know. colors in them. You so. save, you save buying on bulk in Jedi robes and and plastic lightsabers. Right. right. Yeah. So I mean, like I said, it, I thought it had potential, but they were going to have to work really hard to to get it to where it needed to go for me to like care about it. So, but whatever. Yeah. I was I was pretty frustrated by the show by the end. Yeah, I'm, I'm not it's like I'm sad to see it go. You know, like yeah, you know I, we, we talked about it, and since I've since then, you know, I you get to stew on stuff, and I think my opinion has just gotten a little bit worse and worse. Of course, you start on the internet that happens with everything mostly, but right, I think it kind of was my own opinion too. Like I was just thinking about it, I'm like, oh, there was that, and there was that. Uh, let, let me ask. So you know, there's something that Richard and I were discussing the other week when we went and saw Alien, is that, like, do you hate it as, but still love it as a Star Wars movie? Do you hate it because it's a Star Wars movie, or do you just hate it in general? Wait, what are we referring to specifically? Acolyte. You know, I didn't hate it. Yeah, just, I didn't hate it. I, that's what I'm saying. It was met to me. Like, uh, yeah. It's okay. Well, that's what I mean. Is it is it mad because it's in the Star Wars universe? Does it automatically get love from you because it's in it's Star Wars? You no, know, the problem is it's in the Star Wars universe. I don't feel like they're trying hard. I mean, like this was fine. They tried hard, but again, like I, I feel like having a flashback episode right before is like as your like penultimate episode. That's a dumb idea. And th- those those kids were not great. And you know, 
it being Star Wars, Wars was, it being Star Wars is irrelevant, kind of. I wish that because it's Star Wars, I wish it were better. But my expectations are low at this point because it's Star Wars. The only thing about it being Star Wars is it's guaranteed that I will watch it. Yeah, because I I <laughs> want I want and, to believe. I'm right. still hungry over here. Like I want to believe. I'll watch it. But, so do you think that the show has no rede redeeming qualities or characters or anything? Do no, you want to see? Do you want to see so characters from the show in other shows or in other movies or anything like that? No, I I don't want them to spread those characters out. If they're not going to do more acolyte stuff, then they don't. You know, what the way I felt about it was, it was a lot of cool ideas and some cool characters with some confounding writing choices. It's like there was potential there, but they were making some writing choices. I was like, why would you even do that? You know, why doesn't didn't make any sense for these characters to do these things? And I'm saying that and the leads were incredibly frustrating. The writing on the leads was incredibly, incredibly frustrating. Yeah. You know? Really uneven. Yeah. And really like did, like from one episode to the next, they would not act the same and not like do the same type of things. And I was just like. Why would she do that? You know, why was Soul so obsessed with her at on the last episode? You know, or I mean, in, in the the flashback episode, it's like, why did he become so instantly obsessed? And, There's no and it didn't like match up to what how he had been acting the rest of the show. And it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. And 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 how did he not know that wasn't her? See, and that's another thing. Is like the really <laughs> uneven use of their force abilities. I think that's because something sometimes they should. They were really yeah. intuitive. Yeah. And sometimes beforehand, or somehow, right. should have gotten shown throughout the episodes was that that this is like High Republic times, and a lot of the force powers that we may be used to now had not been explored back then. Yeah, you know, like they being this, as force sensitive hold as, on. as this, we're used to is not explored. Is probably, um, this is only about a hundred years before, not even that before. Uh, the Phantom Menace. This is less than a century before the Phantom Menace. This is not like the, the High Republic or something. Well, no, that's what they were saying. It was High Republic time. It's at the very yeah. end of the High Republic. This yeah. was, it was only less than a century away from the Phantom, the Menace, yeah. Phantom Menace. Well, okay. like, even well, still the in the Phantom Menace, they didn't know how to force evolve. That's what I'm saying. It was, but it's basically still the same era, give or take, you know, about a century of knowledge, I suppose, which is a lot, I guess. It, it just depends but, on what, because I know Doc Plagueis, in his studies and meditations, had discovered different force powers that hadn't been used before. And he had introduced them to the dark side and into the Sith and whatnot. And that technically back then they weren't even called the Sith yet because it hadn't been born. Right. Are so, you are you sad that uh, as a wait, you feel like the Plagueis reference at the end was a waste of a reference and now it, it might not actually come to fruition? I'm sad because as a fan of the Sith, I'm not going to see the evolution from the beginning. And I'm sad because I feel like as, as, as bad as a representation as this may have been, I think that with this kind of an origin story where you're getting basic primordial ooze crawling up to eventually get to where we want it to be, that's where we are, and because it failed to entertain us, we're not going to get to see the evolution go the way we wanted yeah. to. Yeah, so it happens too often, unfortunately. Much like a lot of the Star Wars universe, we like the middle movies, but the movies that explain where they came from and where they're going are crap. We just want the meat of the story, which is episodes four, five, and six. So I feel that's what we're getting here, is that we're, we don't. Nobody wants to see how the Sith began. They just want to see the Sith throw down. No, like no we want to see it begin. We just want it to be done better, right? I, and agreeably, that that's and that's, that's not what's being understood here because it wasn't conveyed properly via the director, storyteller, whoever. Yeah, you know, but even it's even their if fault. Like we're not going to get it as a fan. Even yeah. if their force powers weren't the same as they are later. Within the series itself, the force powers were super uneven. They didn't stick to their own like rules in the series itself. Yeah, At some point, they were very the discovery of the discovery of those. The discovery of those powers came up during fights and during during meditation scenes and stuff that I would have liked to have seen happen. Yeah, during encounters that I would have liked to have seen. You know, yeah. it's like when they wrote it, they they 
they thought of some cool stuff to happen throughout the series, but didn't really worry about writing the stuff in between that cool stuff. Right. They didn't want to, they didn't, they didn't branch off that far. Yeah. In, 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 you know, the, the, it did have some of the best fight scenes. I will say yeah, that. they had some of the best choreography I've seen the, since. The fight the scenes were really imaginative yeah. and and really cool and right. Yeah, it was but, pretty good. The fight scenes were pretty good. Yeah, everything I mean, else just it came was watchable, short. but man, it was not thrilling. No, mostly right. I was, I was mostly and, and those 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 twins were horrible. They were horrible actresses. I don't know if it was yeah. them or the writing. I I don't know, but man, yeah, that was that was rough. Yeah. It was like they got they they looked over to the side, saw a cue card that said "fight each other," and then they were like, <laughs> See, but "They were inconsistent too." That's the thing is like they're they could they were inconsistent in their opinions of things, like their actions yeah. were. In, they they right. were switching, you know. They were they would they they would switch motivations. I don't know for no reason really. May may have switched like three times for That's no apparent reason. Well, that's yeah. what happens when you're literally bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you guys also, see the dark half? <laughs> also, that the, the whole like you were two and one. What do they call that thing? The uh, what do you call remember. it? There was some some nonsense yeah. word like midi chlorians that he calls yeah. like the the two that are one. And I'm like, stop trying to explain it. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, the thing. Just stop, stop trying to explain everything. It's like we don't need to know. <laughs> we don't need it now. What the force is, you know? Or the like force. that they're this unique event. Right. You know, <laughs> don't, don't explain it. Just, you know, those witches were up to some shit. Excuse me. <laughs> and that's all there is. See, that's another thing. Is like, yeah, I'd like to know more about time, the witches. Who are the general that the will, you know? enforce their will? <laughs> Oh, that was totally relevant. Although, I, I we talked, we, I don't, we, already, we, already, we already talked about this, but like, you know, Making the Jedi the bad guy, I get it. You, you think that that, but it's not that thrilling. They are annoying, but yeah. I don't know. Um, well, at this point, we are going to move on to our alien discussion. I think this is where we need yeah, to say yeah, goodbye yeah. to one of our members, Mr. Labartnik, correct? It's no surprise you haven't seen it yet. I'm surprised I saw it before you. That's that's what threw me. I was like, "What?" It, it's just a matter of circumstance that I have not yeah, seen. Yeah, I know. I am. I am. I'm itching really bad. Okay, can I? I'm going to tell you one thing. Don't, don't tell me anything. I have to tell you this one thing. That I'm not going to tell you anything until after you see it. Good. Please, I want to. I want to experience this thing. I do want to. You do. I do want to talk to you after you see it, though. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. If, if oh, you do I'll see it. Like, like, we'll pull you on. We're gonna do an episode for you after you see it. So I get my own that excitement. Opinion of Alien. I mean, I love the Alien series. I feel like I'm an authority. I'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, me and Richard were discussing it. Like, it doesn't matter what movie it is. I don't care what Alien movie it is. I love the series so much. I love every single movie. I even love the Predator with that stupid ass Predator suit at the end of it. I love it because it's in the universe. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I like that one when they when that Alien versus Predator sequel where they're in the small town. I like that one a oh, lot. Dude. Yeah, Requiem. Yeah, Requiem's not bad. They're yeah. in the high school, but the, that yeah, one was the great. best one because it's the only one that shows the Predator homeworld. Like you saw the Predator homeworld, and you saw it for a good fifteen minutes at the mm. very beginning. Yeah, you know? it's been a while, but I remember loving it. But I love. You know, even the Wayland Utani stuff, it shows up in Serenity, it shows up in Firefly. Like it, you know, it it just randomly shows up all over the place, and that way it ties all this stuff together. So well, I'm yeah. excited. Don't worry. I'm excited and I'm gonna see it. It's, it's just been a matter of circumstance that I yeah, I Okay, good. Me. Get off now, get off the phone, the the, the, the here. Thing, so that we can chat about it. All right, you guys chat. All right. All right, okay. brother. We'll talk to you later. See you later, Joe. All right. All right. Now that he's out, I'm going to kick him from the studio. Please hold on. <laughs> okay. So that movie sucked. I don't know what anybody else is talking about. <laughs> that movie was crap. Oh my God. Why did you make me go see this movie? 
I'm just kidding. What did you think? Oh, I liked it a lot. Just liked? No, I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I loved it. I thought it was, um, it had some stuff that I wasn't thrilled about, but I mean, it was pretty minor. But um, this is how much I love the movie. I'm now playing Alien Isolation. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah, that's movie. what you're saying. No, I thought it was great. I'm. It's. Um, I I haven't seen Covenant, but okay. um, I was that. I said okay. Um, but I need to I need to watch Romulus a couple more times and let it sit with me for a while. But it might be my third favorite Alien movie. Um, it was it was really really good. It was. Uh, well, now that we're now that Joey's gone and the movie came out last week Thursday, so it's been a week. And Richard and I did the non-spoiler episode uh -huh. where we gave our general idea. This can be our spoiler episode. Okay, so, so yeah, feel free to, to give away the secrets and everything. Spoilers ahead. Yeah. Um, Just heads no, up, I everybody. Mean, from the ground up, I liked everything about it. I liked I liked the story of why they went in. You know why they did what they did. I liked the production design was off the charts phenomenal. Yes. It looked it looked great. Everything looked great. I loved uh I loved Andy. He was like one of my favorite synthetics. Yeah, I thought, the best guy, thing ever. I thought that guy did a great job. Um I loved like like when they first went aboard the space station and you know and the, the gravity wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And they had the actors and the camera going in different directions, and it made me queasy, like I was really, you know, in that situation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was so well done. It was, I was just like, uh, what's the director's name? The guy, he did Evil Dead. But, um, Alvarez? Man, what's that? Betty Al Alvarez? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Man, he, I, I really liked Evil Dead too. But, uh, yeah, he nailed it. He did a really good job of like scaring you grossing you out um yeah it, it was great i thought it was i thought it was really well done i thought it had some great kills it had some great new ideas i hadn't seen in an alien movie before um yeah i thought it was i thought it was pretty top notch i i had originally thought that the worst thing i had ever seen in any of the alien movies had been the cgi in alien uh 4 resurrection of the aliens in water. Right. And I, I still stand by that point. Even so much so that this movie, when it showed me the face huggers in water, uh, that was phenomenal. Like yeah. I, I was freaking the fuck out about yeah. going in water for a little bit after that. But like the because they show for those of you who've seen it, right? You there's face huggers running all over the water. And they're legit face huggers. Yeah, they're all is all practical. These all practical yeah. effects, right? They're they're actual. There's like a they show the face hugger, and it's connected to a remote control. It's connected to a camera and a handheld device. So they moving the face huggers. It goes like this, like they're moving it around, like this. The camera in real time and everything, instead of CGI. And they had yeah. all different kinds of people running multiple face huggers all over. Yeah phenomenal job the yeah. effects on it everything they did on it was great and then you tie that in with the effects of the ship running into the rings of the planet below oh my god dude right and the shadowing and the lighting and everything the, and the, the sound design sound dude. <laughs> yeah, right. the sound everything and you were like fuck i'm here yeah, there. No, there were several points where it like affected you physically because of the filmmaking and the, the sound and the lighting. Dude, that whole uh, that whole thing with that it was just a brilliant idea of them being on that tight time schedule because the station's getting closer to the rings, right? And then after that explosion, it like it jumps it up, enough, like yeah. up to like nine minutes left, and it was such a good idea. Um, the whole reason of them going to salvage cryo chambers so they could get off planet and go to a nicer planet was a great idea. Right. Um, Did yeah. you notice that the cryo chambers were in the shape of the Wayland Yutani yes. logo? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you when they opened, yep. Yep. Um, 
but yeah, I thought it was, I thought all the world building was cool. I liked how they set up. I mean, just in a, you know, a couple of minutes, how shitty the, the mining colony was and, you know, all their parents had died in the mines, you know, and, uh, that's what I was telling. Uh, that's what I was saying. The last podcast, I was like, Fede Alvarez like hit the ground running in yeah. this. Thing. Yeah, like yeah. there was no, there was no brief moments. There was no enjoying the background. There was no like you know happy moments. There's no, no. camaraderie or anything. No, it's like bam, go. And yeah. there's drama from the minute it, it starts, and and your heart is just racing, and you're going along with these characters, and you don't have a time to breathe and you're almost there with them yeah it almost feels real time no like in a couple of minutes when rain and andy first went aboard the ship they just did a couple of minutes to where you got the gist of all their relationship with each other right like they did a really good job of like oh these two used to date oh the guy she used to date and his sister were close right. oh you know you know and they just in a matter of minutes they like laid out everybody's relationship to each other and you knew all you needed to know to go from there. It was, yeah. It, and I wanted Andy to beat the shit out of that one dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all I wanted was Andy to beat him down. And when he reached out and saved him from falling through the asshole. hole. Yeah. I thought for sure he was going to be like, you need to shut the fuck up. You know? right. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh yeah, that yeah, that was great. Yeah, when he was like walking backwards and he'd like, yeah. like grab him and you thought he was gonna hit him, he was like, Nope, saved his life. Yep, yeah. No, um, no, yeah, I uh uh all the action set pieces were great. Um the way they tied it in to Alien was awesome. That was the you know, the alien they found was the one she blasted out of the right out of the airlock at the end. And uh no, I thought it was it was really well done for you know, especially a, a like I mean, basically a direct sequel, you know, um, but done you know, forty years later, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think he nailed it. I think he did a really good job, and I like that it expands the universe without mm -hmm. interrupting the timeline, the already established right. timeline. It, it literally creates a, a split. You know, to where now this thing can go here along the timeline with it. Yeah, 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 know, and not interfere in anything. Right. Cause any drama. If anything, um, you know, you can almost tie it back to other alien movies in some way. Well, no, and that's what he did too. He 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 took this movie and used it as a bridge between Alien, Aliens, and right. Prometheus. Right. And and Heaven. I was just like, I was just like. Oh my gosh, that was really, but, and without beating you over the head with it, right. you know, if, if you had never seen Prometheus, it didn't, doesn't really matter. You know, you're not going to lose anything from watching this movie, but if maybe a little movie, confused, like the thing about Prometheus, when I, when I watched it, cause I watched Prometheus and Covenant and an alien before coming into this movie, mm -hmm. uh, only because I'm a dork and I watch them once a year anyway. Right. But, um, the only thing you you might get a little confused on is the black ooze, yeah, and what the 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 humanoid alien right, looked, right, right. why it looked like that, yeah. But otherwise, everything else just folded in nice and smooth, yeah. You know, and dude, Ian Holm, what the hell? That was pretty crazy. Like when when he showed up and. And I read, I've read all the stuff. Like everybody online is like, how disgusting it is for you to, you know, monopolize on this poor actor. He's posthumously, you know, he's passed away. Let him rest. Blah blah blah. You're milking his estate, and how, how do they feel? You well, know? he, the director. Well, that's, what, that's what I was getting to. Like his oh, estate yeah, yeah. would came back on after someone had posted it, and they're like with the dollar sign. <laughs> they're like. We good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he went. He went to England and talked to his widow and his kids. Right, and they, they were there on set it, yeah. during the filming and everything. Like they, yeah. they were happy because you know they they thought that uh, Ian had said it was one of the funnest movies he ever did. You know, right. he, had, he had a blast on set, and so. he said he wanted to 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 use Ian's uh, synthetic because it was the only one that hadn't been in two movies. Right, all the other ones had been in two movies, and he wanted. He wanted Ian to have that, like all the rest did. So right, but Hendrix, no, not Hendrix, and somebody 
from one of the older movies was on set while they were filming. I can't remember who, but like they paid some respect. Yeah. Um, now I started playing uh, Alien Isolation because they it's a side story to this. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know about the game I, Alien Isolation. Have a little played? bit, yeah. So I, it, I watched I watched a, a rundown of the Alien before I went and saw this. I watched like a YouTube rundown of all the Alien properties, and they talk about the games and everything too. Okay, so Alien Isolation is um, Ripley's daughter, right? And it's like. 40 years later, and she's out searching for her mom, but working on different ships to get by in the meantime. And uh, what happens is she comes across the Sevastopol, which is a, a, a way station that the Nostromo had once visited. And uh, and they're infested with aliens. And so she's just trying to get through, you know, whatever. And all, this, all the set designs and pieces in the video game are what Fede Alvarez used in the movie. Mm. So they're all the same stuff, all the yeah. roundness of the cushions and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the telephones that you use as save points in the game, Fede Alvarez used in the movie nice. to show you that some shit was about to go down. Right. Because, you know, you save before you go fight before a ball. Before something or happens, yeah. Right. So he did that in the movie to show you that some shit was about to go down. So I... Like was trying to keep an eye out for those phones while I was watching the movie, but I was also so amazed by everything else that was going on. Like I lost track after a while, so That's I have cool. to go see it at least ten more times before. <laughs> yeah, I, I really want to see it, you know for sure, for sure, one more time before I leave the theater. But yeah, yeah, it was it was great. It was uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, there was so much stuff that I, I had never seen in an Aliens movie before. Like when they're going through the the anti gravity with all the acid floating in the air, yeah, that, was that was cool. Super cool. Uh, when the acid was uh, dropping down on Bjorn and just eating away his arms, and yeah. we had never seen it done in that way before. You know, we'd seen it sizzling through people's armor, but we'd never got to see up close it yeah. eating through people's flesh. And oh man, it was it was gnarly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the chest bursting scene with the uh, pilot um, Navarro. Mm-hmm. That was great, and and how that when she was having that chest burster scene, and she hit the throttle of the ship, and the ship crashed into the space station, and that's what pushed it closer to the rings, and the way that the pregnant girl was getting thrown around during all that, oh, it was just gnarly. It was <laughs> super, super gnarly, and uh, yep. yeah, he was, dude. The way he directed it, it, he did such a good job of making you like feel what everyone was going through, and right. The tension, and, you know, you're not just you're like boom, 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 boom. boom. Yeah, <laughs> like you're you're watching the movie, you're engaged in the movie. Yeah. Now, were there some very convenient things that happened in the film? Yeah, I think it, yeah. like I'm not hearing you just decide, hey, I'm going to go fly into space one day, and there's a random space station right here. Right. All I do is go up. <laughs> but you know what? For the sake and time that. Petty Alvarez, what he was trying to do with the pacing of the film, it was understandable. No, yeah. You know, because he was running, you were just running, like I said before. Yeah. Put the ground running with this movie. Well, when a movie's movie. when a movie's done well and and like being true to itself, it's easy to like not worry about some details, you know. It's when a movie is crap when you is when you start nitpicking the details. Right, you know, but when a movie's really well done and they and they put you know you can tell they've put heart into it and they cared about what they were doing, you don't nitpick it as much because there's so much great stuff that you loved and you can feel you know their their honest effort into it. It's when it's when people are just throwing crap out is when you nitpick it. You know what I mean? So right. Now uh, there were some I don't know about uh, what you guys had over at your place. But at ours, all the collectible stuff was gone. The yeah, there was. There. Well, um, well, the problem is they start putting that out like even before the movies open. Right, right, and the employees swoop them all up. And, right, yeah. and then put them on eBay, and yeah, right. I've kind of, so, I've kind of even given up on getting any of that. I, I just like cups. I, I you know, I yeah. get collect cups, and I, I drink my cups, you know, yeah. and, and do my thing. But 
uh, when we got out of the movie, there was a guy there, and he had gone, like you had said, two weeks earlier, and he bought all the collector's items and stuff. And he had them there. He brought it with him to see the movie. And so he was out there with his kids, and he had all the cups up and the popcorn holders and everything was showing them up. So I got a chance to look at them, and I can't, and I have to say, I'm fairly disappointed with them. Oh, really? So I saw the xenomorph head, and it was like this big. Yeah. Uh, like maybe a foot and a half. Yeah. If that, and small, like yeah. small. Like it, it, if it held a medium, small popcorn, I'd be surprised. Uh, like it would have had to cram that popcorn in there. You know? right. Um, he had the alien containment units, which were about the size of a of a large popcorn mm-hmm. holder, and those were cool. But then the alien tumbler cups, they were like this big, oh. like eight ounce cup. Yeah, this lame. Big. And it was weak, and so I'm glad I didn't spend any money on it. But yeah. the cool thing was. When we had got out the theater, like I said, to see another fan out there taking all the pictures and stuff. Right. And then we we got to chat with them, and we sat there for like a good half hour afterwards just talking about how wonderful of a movie it was and how much we liked yeah. it. We all we were all geeking out and having fun. That's what's what a good movie does. Yeah. You know, it brings people together, lets you geek out, lets you have a little fun out, out there, and, 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 you know, brings people together, and you have fun. That's what a good movie is, you know? Yeah. And I haven't had that in a while where audience participation, everybody's enjoying it. You right. Know, it's been pretty quiet at the theater for a minute. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I was glad that, that was another reason why I enjoyed the movie was because it, everybody seemed to enjoy it as well. You know? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I thought it was pretty top notch for sure. Uh, well, that about wraps up our episode. I want to thank Joey. He couldn't stick around for the movie or for the review because um, he's weak and we don't like him anymore. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's ugly. He's just a really, really ugly man. Um, I've had to look at his face for many, many decades, and it, I can't tell you how many pairs of glasses that he's warped. Warped, not shattered, warped. That's how ugly he is. He just melts my lenses into different prescriptions, you know, just changes the prescription. I wonder how, I wonder how much stuff he's had spoiled so far. By by staring. Uh, I, I don't know, but, I mean, you mean food-wise because of how ugly it is? It's just <laughs> no, I meant, I meant from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Considering he's not watching this right now. Uh, no, I just, mean from, I just mean from, like, the internet and stuff. And, oh, yeah, probably yeah. not. Poor Joey. Uh, Joey hasn't seen the movie, which is why he had to bump off. Yeah. Um, Because he didn't want to have it spoiled for him. Little baby Joey. I promised we would tease him for a good 10 minutes after he was left. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, um, Yeah, so this weekend, Justin and I are getting together, and we're going to be interviewing the writer and creator of the Build the Vampire series, Rick Gulteri. He'll be here live with us uh, in studio and talk about his books and all of his stuff and by getting to know you. Um, You were looking very much like one of his Sasquatches in his books. So uh, that'll work for you there, Justin. Um, So make sure you guys tune back in at that time. Uh, Justin, is there anything else you wanted to say before we bounce? Um, No, I don't think so. I think that... I think that's Make sure it. you uh, come check out all of our websites, all of our social media stuff, all that stuff. Uh, we try hard every day to bring you content to read, look at, and all that. Yeah, I, I do have a new Shots from the Studio up, went up today. Um, yes, he does. I can verify that because I posted it. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, check that out. And then um, if you haven't seen the rest of them, you could, there's links to the rest of them at the, uh, at the bottom of the new one. Please comment. Or, or tag or post or share, subscribe, something. Let us know that you're alive and that it's not just the zombies that, that read our books. <laughs> Even though we write about zombies and killing them, maybe they're just trying to figure out, you know, how to survive us. Right. So uh, maybe it should be called Surviving the Zombie Killers. <laughs> That's our next book. From there. <laughs> 
All right, so um, for Justin, I'm AJ. Uh, thanks again for everybody. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Woo!